Eaton Park, the home of West Ham, for their match against Inform Everton. The West Ham team, strengthened by the return of the former Arsenal striker John Radford to their attack, He's missed a couple of games with a back injury. It's good to see him back at a time when West Ham now reached the critical period of their fight against relegation, even though Radford has yet to score for his new club. His experience and strength in the air could be vital. As for Everton, manager Gordon Lee has dropped Duncan McKenzie and Andy King, and Bruce Rioch is injured. But one player given his first chance for three months or so is George Telfer at number 10, with uh, Brian Hamilton at 7, and Terry Darracott now at number 6. And one player in tremendous form, Bob Latchford, 20 goals this season, only eight fewer than the whole of West Ham have got in the league. Here's John Radford, and what an important time for him now to get on the mark for West Ham. The referee is Les Burden from Dorset, and now the sunshine crowd waits for the start. And away we go, Everton attacking the goal to our right in an all-yellow strip against West Ham's claret and blue shirts, white shorts, white stockings. The start of such an important ten days for West Ham when they play five games. It will decide their future as a first division club. And of course if they get off to a good start here, although people complain that it's uh, a rather congested fixture list, if they get off to a good start and avoid injuries, there's nothing like playing another game quickly if you're on a winning run. And West Ham have won four of their last six. Here's Billy Bonds. And that's David Lawson's ball before Brian Robson can get it. Tommy Taylor's head up, but straight to Goodless. Kevin Locke now for West Ham. Cut out well by Dobson. Looking. After so much rain in recent weeks, a really dry ground. And, uh, Ball will play one or two tricks as Lampard gets it in and gets it in well there. Just wanted to touch there from Jennings, he couldn't quite apply it. header Devonshire turning that on but Brian Hamilton there oh it's on off Devonshire for Brooking played on again for Radford just on side Billy Jennings coming up fast as well and he hit that hard behind when maybe pulling it back to Robson or Jennings might have been more profitable Gordon Lee in the centre Steve Burtonshaw Rangers and uh, Arsenal fans remember him on the left and Jim Pearson, the substitute on the right. Looking to Devonshire. Bonds. Devonshire. Lock. Lampard. Radford. And a West Ham throw. With it, here's Radford. And that's a corner for West Ham. Hocking will take it. Good taker of corners. Bonds has come up. Radford's on the far side. Robson making a run towards the near post. Played short here to Lampard. There's the little chip going in towards John Radford. And Everton were in a little bit of trouble there until David Jones got it away. Jennings making a good run away from his marker, Mike Lyons. Devonshire. Well, he didn't quite clear Rad, uh, Latchford. And now a good run now for Goodlass. Oh, when he's seen. Oh, and he's a goal! What brilliant thinking there by Ronnie Goodlass. One out of the blue and showed that the fella was thinking all the time. It was Latchford who put him on. He stopped and looked up, saw Mervyn Day was a good seven yards off his line and from 40 yards lobbed it over his head. A terrible setback there for West Ham. Only good last, and that's only the second goal he scored and the first he scored since October.
Well, I would think Mervyn Day will be kicking himself for that. Oh, Jennings! Well, that disease was nearly spreading because uh, Lawson was badly placed for that one. And Jennings had a very nearly made it. So as Lawson clears it, Mervyn Day ponders at slightly faulty positioning. Lampard. And an Everton throw. not straight to Brooking here's Robson Jennings Devonshire outside him it's Pedrick this time here's Devonshire again having a lively opening quarter of an hour Brooking Played nicely there for Jennings. Radford's right in there. Jennings hopeful of getting in there. Devitt is in there too. Jennings turning it in. Oh, across the face of that Everton goal. So close to being the equaliser. And a lot of the credit there going to Alan Devonshire, who's uh, had a very good opening quarter of an hour. Played well there with a great deal of dogged determination. Got the ball back to Jennings. Hit it first time across the face of that Everton goal. Radford's hit back for Robson but not quite West Ham pouncing on everything that's loose and here's Billy Bonds Radford playing it in for Robson now no kicked away there by Pedrick West Ham showing a lot of spirit in spite of that early uh, setback Bonds right in there and when the ball finally came through to Brian Robson kicked off the line Brooking, Bonds, Robson, Brooking. Not a good cross by him, and a penalty given. Well, Radford uh, bundled in the back there. The long cross that came over from Trevor Brooking. Bradford bundled to the ground and the referee without hesitation pointing to the penalty spot and it looks as though it's going to be uh, Brian Robson one penalty success for him so far this season and what an important kick for him now against David Lawson so Robson a man with a heavy responsibility here he goes and he's got it 1-1 of Brian Robson hitting that to the left of Lawson just beyond his reach 1-1 one, one. well Everton had come and they defended in great strength and West Ham sorely needed a break like that Pedrick Latchford. Good run, Everton. Ten without defeat. Goodless turning it in. Locke getting it away. Never any doubt about the penalty. Uh, quite probably awarded. Bonds gain more determination. Devonshire, a great, great determination. That was... Well, I couldn't see from this angle what sort of challenge that was, but it was clear that West Ham didn't think much of it. Billy Bonds... Pushing Darragot away, and the referee, in fact, has given him the yellow card. Let's look again, a 50-50 ball, that. And Darragot gets the yellow card. Billy Bonds, 10 minutes to half-time. Smiling, that suggests that maybe the injury to Alan Devonshire is not too bad.
Mons with the free kick. Devonshire OK. Oh, a pass back there by Hamilton that could have caused trouble but didn't. Fighting on West Ham, McNaught now being harassed by Brian Robson and Pidgeot getting it away. Locke reacting first there before Telford. Here's Brookie. He played with a lot of spirit, West Ham. Long clearance that time by Derricott. Billy Bonds. Surprise of Everton, but not in the end, David Lawson. Nicely behind it. Billy Bonds. It's Lampard. Robson, very tight in there, and it might come yet for Bradford, and uh, he had to hit it as it fell. And indeed, as he fell, and he caught it on the up. Looking. Played on again for Lampard. Oh, that was another corner. And I think they'll probably just about have time to uh, take it and no more. Well, they've got a delay while Trevor Brooking goes across there and takes it now. The referee looking at his watch again. Bonds couldn't get the header in. And Everton finally get it away as the whistle goes for half time. Well, a lot of spirit there from West Ham, particularly after that setback after 10 minutes when Ronnie Goodless scored that incredible goal from some 45 yards over Mervyn Day. And they battled away and really deserved an equaliser, even though it came from the penalty spot and Brian Robson. I fancy we might have uh, a second half full of action and fury, and let's hope one or two goals as well. But a half-time then at Upton Park. West Ham won, Everton won. We'll be right back with that second half. They're edging it at the minute. Trusted Trader, sponsoring daytime on ITV4. Ah, Gru, I've been streaming all day. It's so reliable, this Sky Broadband Superfast. It's fantastic. <laughs> Mom, Superfast Speeds was my idea, remember? Behold! Welcome back to Upton Park then. 1-1 the half-time score, West Ham now attacking the goal to our right. Here's Otto Lukowski. Bonds. And Devonshire. Don't quite get to Bonds, not quite the way he wanted it, and now he's got a bit of a problem there with goodness. Tommy Taylor in. Everton with uh, really quite a programme, uh, quite apart from the league. Of course, involved still in the semi-final of the FA Cup. And that never-ending saga of the League Cup final. Darricott. Lampard, the header to Robson. And again, the pattern of the first half with them bringing everybody back. But Brooking still turning it across there. My goodness, that just needed somebody to be positioned at that far post, and it would have been interesting. Goodless getting it away now for Everton. Well, they're bringing on their substitute, in fact. Uh, Telfer's going off, and Jim Pearson is on. Must have been in the air so often this afternoon. And now it's on the ground with Robson. Lyon stopping him. Gordon Lee in the background there, the Everton manager. He's the manager who believes in discipline and hard work, and it's very hard working over inside and well disciplined in defence, but can Brooking get past him? Can Robson get past them? No, McNaught is there. Robson. You can just see there again just how many yellow shirts are back in these situations. Look at them all there. In and around that evident penalty area. Oh, just pushed away. Lampard's long shot by Lawson. Uh, by Lampard, pushed away there by Lawson. 
was doing. Pete in a funny sort of way of Goodless's goal. And Lawson just getting there in the end. Brooking with the corner. Pete in low towards Robson on the far side is Radford. Well, that could easily have uh, been swept into that Everton goal with a little bit of luck. Brooking hit that corner in low and it uh, came across to the far side where Radford was. Instead, it's a goal kick. Hamilton. Oh, Pearson. Up beyond uh, Locke. And a goal for Everton, scored by Pearson. Well, another shattering blow for West Ham. They've been pushing forward, having so much of the game. And Everton have done them on the break again. Pearson getting in behind Kevin Locke, taking it to the right of the goal and beating Gray with a really powerful low shot. West Ham 1, Everton 2. And Jim Pearson, the scorer of the second goal for Everton. So West Ham have got to do it all again. Rookie. A free kick to West Ham, right on the edge of that Everton penalty area. Well, if West Ham uh, can bounce back quickly, they may have the chance now. So Lawson lining up his ball. Until he beats that right-hand post so that he covers the left-hand side of the goal as he is standing at it, anyhow. Now, Brooking and Lampard. Lining up behind this one, plenty in the wall, including Brian Robson. And Lampard driving it, but uh, it's skewed off the wall. It'll come to Brooking again, and that time charged down by Pearson. And a throw to West Ham. Well, these are worrying times for John Wyatt. Pearson and Latchford well offside. Bonds with a long clearance. Free kick. Foul by Lyons on Radford. Darakot getting right in front of that ball so that uh, Brooking couldn't play the quick one. Well, now can Tommy Taylor get it? Rifling it across the goal there. And again, for the want of a touch, West Ham would have been level. That was amazing, the way that spun off there for Tommy Taylor. And uh, sensibly playing the ball in across that six-yard area. But alas for West Ham, nobody in Claret and Blue was there. Bonds. Another go. This time finding Robson. Here's Devonshire. Bonds again. Devonshire. Handling that challenge of Dobson. Taking on Pedic. Oh, and he uh, got a corner. Well, that was a nice rippling little run by Alan Devonshire, and uh, maybe he just took it a little uh, too far because uh, two Everton players were filling in there to prevent the cross. But he's got this corner, which Brooking will take. Come for Otilikowski. Misfit badly. Lampard. Will he drive one in there? Playing it wide for Tommy Taylor. Everybody up for West Ham now. And a push, yes, surely. No. Well, he's given a free kick. He's given a free kick to West Ham on the six-yard line, or just a yard outside it. That presumably must have been obstruction, but it's, uh, I must say, a curious decision because it certainly seemed to be exactly the same thing that had happened to Radford in the first half. Down goes Jennings. And the referee gives a free kick. Indirect, but that Everton wall must at least be on the goal line. It's, uh, of course, impossible for them to be back the full ten yards. Now, Brooking, just look at them on that goal line. 
Now, are we going to get a really spectacular goal here somehow through that wall? There's a bit of scurrying and scuffling going on the line there. West Ham desperate for something here. Lampard hitting it inevitably straight against the wall. And Latchford can bring it away now for Everton. Bubble and a throw. Here's Lock. Played in again for Robson. In across towards there for Billy Jennings. Couldn't quite get the uh, contact he wanted. Proof that West Ham, even with all those Everton players back, can get in behind them as uh, Robson and Jennings contrived to do there. Pearson. Now perhaps Everton can spring out. Goodless. In fact, they've got two, four, five men up now. Goodless taking on Tommy Taylor. It's a bit of ball skill there. Beautiful play by Goodless. And it's just too high. Well, what about that for a bit of delicate ball skill on the ground? By Ronnie Goodless. Tommy Taylor up, I think, was the message, if my lip reading is right. Here's Lock. Brooking. Crossed in once more towards Radford again. McNaught is there. Oh, Tulekowski! Bradford and McNaught have had quite a battle all afternoon. McNaught has won a good share of the balls in the air as he did then, but it came out to young Anton Abtulikowski. Cracked it in there, but wide. Well, Pearson finding goodness. Towards the near post, and Latchford, and straight into the arms of Day. Now, here is Tommy Taylor. You saw the message yourself a bit earlier by... John Lyle saying, get forward. Robson turning it on now for Jennings. Crossed in again there for Robson! 2-2! Well, the little man's second goal, and what a welcome one for West Ham, with seven minutes left. Taylor playing his part, going up that left touch line, and when the ball came in for Brian Robson, a flick of the neck muscles, and it was past David Lawson for West Ham's second goal. West Ham 2, Everton 2. And we have just about seven minutes left. And we have quite a finish on our hands. Now, well, Everton uh, still continue to seek to contain West Ham and look for something on the brakes as they've done all this game so far. And will West Ham be able to knock over that yellow wall again? Here's David Jones with Goodless coming up fast on this side. Hamilton going into the middle. And Taylor stretching out and getting a free kick. Day's taken it. West Ham... Sensing that this is a match they could win now. Lobson. Lock. Jennings. Lock again. Played in for Lampard. Look how far up he is. My goodness, that was nearly there too. And Radford keeps it in. Played wide. Billy Bonds. Crossed in once more, good cross two, and a good catch by Lawson. And a good finish here at Upton Park. But as that one uh, skimmed across that evident penalty area, across the six-yard uh, box again, again, all that was required was a touch. I must say, apart from uh, picking the ball out of the net a couple of times, Mervyn Day has had so little to do as Everton have come back, or come here rather, 
determined more than anything else to defend and look for what they can find on the breakaway. A little over two minutes left. Ken McNaught with the free kick for Everton. There's a little over a minute left. Taylor to Brooklyn. Tulekowski. He's not stopped running all afternoon. A little chip now for Billy Jennings. Lions right back there. And a corner for West Ham, although it looked to me a push in the back by Jennings on Lions. So can West Ham see something in the last seconds that remain? Jennings with that corner. Bradford waiting the lead. And Robson very nearly getting in. And in the end, it was turned back by Lions to Lawson. Here's Dobson. Dobson in quickly. Brooking versus Dobson and Brooking winning it. Darakot shadowing him, so too is McNaught. Brooking's on his way. Bond supporting him. And West Ham get another corner. I say again, can they see something in the seconds that remain? Billy Bonds hitting it in low. Devonshire, oh, just over. Ball played nicely there for Alan Devonshire, and he picked the right spot, at least the right part of the goal, except that his aim was just a little too high. again Dobson there goes the final whistle and uh, not so much a point lost as a, a point gained I think for West Ham when you're in their position you do have to keep picking up the odd point here and the odd point there they had so much of the game against a defensive minded Everton but in the end, it finished a 2-2, with Brian Robson, number eight, going in there, getting the two West Ham goals. Jim Pearson having scored that second one for Everton. In fact, Ronnie Goodless, number 11, the first. So Goodless and Pearson for Everton, two by Brian Robson for West Ham. And really, a lot of effort by West Ham in getting this 2-2 draw. Final score, West Ham two, Everton two. Yes, I thought that was a good performance by West Ham and worth at least the point they got. I was a little surprised to read Duncan McKenzie in this morning's News of the World saying I wouldn't put uh, any of my money on West Ham or Spurs staying in the First Division. They haven't the character to battle out the trouble. I would have thought character was one thing that West Ham showed a lot of yesterday. They came back twice from being a goal behind uh, and they showed enormous determination to break down that wall of yellow Everton shirts, eight, nine and ten back in defence sometimes, sometimes even eleven. And they got behind them well on one or two occasions. But just count the yellow shirts here as Billy Bonds tries to hit this high ball in. One fellow facing him. Count those yellow shirts. Two there, that fellow just by the penalty area. Three, four, five, six. The goalkeeper, seven, eight, nine. And as the picture comes away to the left, one with his uh, hands on his knees, ten Everton men back in defence. And that's what West Ham faced. They had 80% of the game, and it was a tremendous job breaking it down. They broke it down seven minutes from the end. A good throw out by Mervyn Day to Tommy Taylor. He'd been pushed forward, as you know, by John Lyle, and he seeks uh, Brian Robson with a nice little pass. What a nice touch by Robson, too. A lot of people may have expected an early ball to come in there from uh, Billy Jennings, but he decided he was going to beat David Jones, chipped it in very accurately, and what about that for a well-guided header? All those Everton defenders beaten at last over the head of David Lawson, and that made it 2-2. We spotted a nice little thing, in fact, as they came back to celebrate, that uh, Jim Pearson, who'd earlier scored for Everton, the Everton player on the far side there, just comes up to Brian Robson. Well done. And that was very nice to see. Your heart goes out to people when uh, they do that sort of thing in the heat of that uh, particular moment. But what about West Ham's penalty and the one they thought they should have had in the second half? Well, in the first half, they got one when John Radford was bundled down. Trevor Brooking lifting the ball in with another of those tantalising crosses of his. Uh, and Mike Lyons, the Everton skipper, look on the left of the picture now is the man who gets involved with Radford, bundles him over, and the referee decided that that was a penalty kick. 
I thought when I saw it first of all that the second incident of the second half was identical to the first, but the referee was well positioned and decided otherwise. Tommy Taylor here with a cross. Now look to the right of your picture. Again, it's Mike Lyons involved, and the referee decided on that occasion, as we take it back again, you'll get another <laughs> look at that, that that was obstruction by the Everton number four and gave that indirect free kick. So West Ham were a little bit unlucky there, so they felt. Uh, but the referee was well placed, and certainly the bottom of the first division now makes very fascinating reading. West Ham started the day at the bottom, and indeed stay at the bottom. Um, but it's so tight in there, even Spurs, who seem to have lifted themselves that little bit clear, look, have played three games more, 33, to West Ham's 30. A lot of uh, excitement yet to come at the bottom of the table. And West Ham's next immediate engagement is away to Queen's Park Rangers tomorrow night. Uh, manager John Lyle, I think, breathed a sigh of relief because there are no West Ham injuries and he can name an unchanged side. I spoke to the QPR manager, Dave Sexton, today, who tells me that Jerry Francis and Dave Thomas may be ready for this game, but he'll only decide that tomorrow, but that Dave Clement, his fullback, is still very doubtful. So the battle goes on for the Hammers, but I don't think there's any doubt at all that whatever the outcome, uh, they really have found a fine young prospect in Alan Devonshire. And I took the opportunity of a quick word with him after the game when I asked him about West Ham's performance. Well, we've been playing well for quite a few weeks, apart from Sunderland, even the Ipswich the other week, which, again, we gave away a silly goal and put the pressure back on us. We, you know, we pushed forward and we left too many gaps. But, uh, you know, the last five weeks, we have really been playing well. Yeah. The situation's a bit difficult now, though, isn't it? Yes, you know, you have to look at the results and the games ahead. But uh, I think we can do it. You know, there's no point that we can't do it, you know, and... Uh, well, just keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, wh why do you say you think you can do it? What is it about you that you, makes you think Well, we've got so many good players. You know, you've got Trevor and Bill. Tommy comes straight back in the side and done well today. You know, the whole side really works for each other and battles. You know, and uh, as I say, there's so many good players. I think we will get out of trouble. But I think most West Ham fans would accept, Alan, that although it's been a disappointing season, you've been one of the good things in that season, the way you've played. You didn't really show an awful lot of pressure today. No, you know, like, the players have been tremendously, you know, towards me all the time since I've been here. And uh, the crowd have been great as well, you know, they're always helping me all, all the time. And uh, I don't really feel any pressure, you know. But now, I feel, I'm just, just about probably now that it's starting to come that we really are struggling, you know, that uh, we're feeling it a little bit now. And another four games in the next nine or ten days, starting at QPR on Monday night. Yeah, you know, I live not far from Queen's Park Rangers, so uh, I'm looking forward to that one. Yes. And uh, we've got three games, you know, Friday, Saturday and Monday. If we can win probably two out of the three over that period, I think we're in with a chance again. But most people went away from Upton Park yesterday knowing that they'd seen probably the most amazing goal of the season, a real candidate for our Golden Goals competition that comes up in the next few weeks, that remarkable chip from Everton's Ronnie Goodless. In fact, it's Alan Devonshire who uh, gives the ball away there, that pass not quite clearing Bob Latchford. Look at Mervyn Day at the other end of the field, way outside the penalty area, some 20 yards at this point out of his goal. A nice guided header there by Latchford. And what about this for some quick thinking again? Apparently he says that he changed his mind a couple of times, then he saw Mervyn Day still eight yards off his line. And that takes a bit of courage, a lot of skill, and a fair ration of cheek as well. And it's moments like that when the faces of goalkeepers go bright red. Overall, I thought it was a great afternoon's entertainment at West Ham. And for me, I'm still convinced that if they play as they did yesterday, that they are too good and there's too much spirit in the side for them to go down.